This week we're talking about energy. What is energy? Simply put, energy is the ability to do work or produce heat. Of course, there are really two main, okay, one, one hand, two main types of energy that we discuss, normally speaking. Whereas kinetic energy is more about energy of motion, potential energy would be described as maybe positional energy. For example, up on this table, I have more potential energy than when I'm on the ground. But as soon as, soon as I step off this table, energy is transferred into kinetic energy, like so. I'm good. I'm good. That conversion of potential to kinetic energy illustrates for us the law of conservation of energy, which tells us that in a reaction or in a system, energy is never created nor destroyed, it's simply transferred. So, we're going to be talking about the transfer of energy in this chapter. Just like me being on that table was a type of potential energy, we also have potential energy inside chemical bonds. We call this chemical potential energy. Now, whenever that potential chemical energy is released, it's usually released in the form of heat. Sometimes light as well, but many times heat, which gets back to what I was doing at the beginning of this video, which we'll get to in just a moment. But for now, let's talk a little bit more about heat. We measure heat in the form of a calorie. A calorie is defined as the amount of heat required to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. Now, if you've ever wondered, hey, that sounds a whole lot like what's on my bag of chips, the calorie is capitalized. That's a nutritional calorie. And that calorie, big C, is actually composed of a thousand of these little calories, or one kilocalorie. Since usually we measure energy in joules, let's make an equivalent to the calorie. One calorie equals 4.184 joules of energy. That leads us to something else, and that's the concept of what we call specific heat. Specific heat refers to any substance. The calorie was defined in terms of water. But specific heat is for any substance. And specific heat is the amount of heat required to raise one gram of that particular substance, one degree Celsius. So in the case of water then, water specific heat would be 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Those are the units we use for it. Now, what that means is that for every gram of water, we have to add 4.184 joules of energy to increase that gram of water one degree Celsius. What do you mean I don't know what I'm talking about? You, you don't know what you're, what, every time we get it. Now, as far as specific heats go, uh, water has a pretty good one. I mean, 4.184, uh, 4 is, is pretty reasonable for specific heat. Now, on the other hand, concrete has a very low specific heat, 0.84 joules per gram degree Celsius. In other words, it takes very little to increase the temperature of concrete compared to water. That's why water's such a great temperature regulator because of its specific heat. The important thing to remember is that every substance has its own specific heat, a constant for that particular substance, something you'd have to read a table for to get the information about that substance. As a matter of fact, there's a table of specific heats in your book on page 520, if you're curious. Now, we can actually calculate the transfer of heat from one system to another based on this equation right here. Q, which equals the heat transfer, that's our, that's our symbol for heat. Q is equal to M, which is mass. C, which is specific heat. And the delta T is the temperature change. So Q equals mass times specific heat times a change in temperature. Here's a good example problem. Let's say we have a sample of iron and it's a 10 gram sample. It starts out at 50.4 degrees Celsius and it reduces heat to 25 degrees Celsius. The heat released, as it turns out, is 114 joules. In this case, let's see if we can figure out what the specific heat of iron is. We're going to use our same equation. Q equals M times C times delta T. You know what, between you and me, I sometimes say Q equals M cat, just to kind of help me remember. So the mass is 10 grams, 
the specific heat is what we're looking for. The heat is 114, and the temperature change would be 50.4 minus 25. 25.4, right? So we're going to rearrange this and solve for specific heat. Specific heat is equal to Q divided by mass times change in temperature. All right? So now let's fill in. We have 114 joules divided by 10. Again, we said 50.4 minus 25. That gives us 25.4 degrees of temperature change. And now we just do the math. So C equals 114 joules divided by, we'll say, 254, right? And 114 divided by 254 is 0.449, and our units, joules per gram degree Celsius. There you go. The specific heat of iron is 0.449 joules per gram degree Celsius. So why was I burning the chip then in the very beginning? Well, that's because the chip burning releases heat, and the water above it is absorbing that heat. The same heat that comes from the chip is absorbed by the water. So let's try to find out how much energy was transferred from that chip to the water. Now I think you're going to see that compared to what the bag says, our results are going to be a lot different. Maybe you can think of some reasons why that might be. Okay, so here we go. Time to press the pause button in just a minute. Let me explain first. The mass of the water, as it turns out, and by the way, I took really good readings, 49.28 grams. The change in temperature that I registered was 12.3 degrees Celsius. We can use the specific heat of water in terms of calories. That will help us a little bit. Remember that one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules of energy. So it's okay for us to use one calorie per gram degree Celsius for the specific heat of water. Finally, remember that one nutritional calorie, capitalized, is equal to 1,000 of these calories. Okay, that's real important. There's extra points in it for you. If you can come up with the percent error based on what we had and the accepted value of the calories that come from one, from one unnamed name brand chip, which is 14.3 nutritional calories. Remember, one of these equals a thousand of these. All right? So, I think you're gonna find a pretty huge percent error. And I want you to think about why that might be. What would cause there to be such error between this and what we get? Okay? I hope that this has been informative for you. I hope that you've learned a lot about energy, the different types of energy, and not only that, about heat and heat transfer, how we compute heat transfer, specific heat, all that jazz. Hope it's been beneficial for you. I'm looking forward to seeing you. I keep praying that we will see each other very soon. But until then, God bless you.